Welcome back to 30 Days to Life. Uh, we're going to be discussing days 22, 23, and 24 today, and uh, I'm glad that you have joined us. So on day number 22, we're going to jump right in on page 101. It's talking about being a disciple. And there's a difference between being a believer or being a Christian and being a disciple. Jesus said if we were going to be his disciples, we have to follow him. There were some very specific instructions he gave and some characteristics that he even uh, outlined in the book of John about uh, what his disciples would look like. They would continue in his word. They would love one another. They would bear much fruit. Um, and he said if we're going to do this, we're going to have to deny ourselves, take up our cross daily and follow him. So uh, I want you to discuss with your group what verse 24 of Luke chapter 9, uh, what it means to you. Um, we need to really focus on uh, what Jesus talked about when he was referring to being a disciple because being a disciple is so very important. We don't just want to be Christians. We don't just want to be believers. We want to actually be his disciples. Uh, and so uh, number five is also a great question. Uh, in your opinion, what is the difference between a Christian and a disciple? Once you have kind of discussed this in your group uh, or the, with your partner, uh, have some meaningful uh, thoughts about you know where where this where this puts you, where where you're at as a believer or a disciple. Uh, if you're just a Christian, uh, it's not enough to just be saved. We we want to follow after Jesus and do what He would have for us to do. So. Proverbs 4.23 uh, says the disciple is, as a disciple, it's important for us to keep our hearts pure because out of our heart are the issues of life. And uh, so one of the best things we can do as we follow Jesus is do our very best to keep our hearts pure. Let's now go on to page uh, 105 and day 23. And this talks about bearing fruit. And uh, we know that Jesus is the vine and uh, we are the branches and we are uh, a part. And as long as we will abide in him and he abides in us, we can bear much fruit. But I would like for us to uh, discuss some questions from this day because um, really fruit bearing is, is the Christian life. And if we are not bearing fruit, then we are probably not becoming everything that God has intended us to be because it's his intention that we bear fruit. So uh, look at question two on page 106. It says, according to Psalm 1, 1 through 3, what will cause you to bear fruit on a consistent basis? And uh, this is important that you understand the, the key elements that are going to help you bear fruit. And you can uh, know these in the scripture. Um, one of the things that it says on number three is, uh, in your own words, explain John 15, 16. Uh, this is very simple. Jesus chose us to bear fruit and that we would keep that fruit. He intends for us to display uh, his characteristics to the entire world. Uh, we are to become more and more like him and to be uh, bearing fruit and showing the fruit of righteousness in our lives. And so question five is also another great discussion question. Describe Jesus' warning in Matthew 3.10. And it's very simple. Uh, you know, you, if, if we're not going to be fruitful, uh, there's a, a strong warning there. And I want you to discuss what is that strong warning? What are some things that we need to pay attention? Because a lot of people think, well, I'm saved. There's no big deal. Uh, I, I just, you know, whatever. I, I'm, I'm good until uh, Jesus returns. Well, uh, Jesus had a different intention for his followers. He really wanted us to bear fruit. And so uh, I would challenge you to look at Matthew 3.10 and really discuss that with your group or with your partner today. And then to finish up day 23, um, ask somebody that's close to you to tell you if you are bearing fruit or if you're not bearing fruit. Uh, just, you know, one of the things you need to do is you need to commit yourself to being uh, abiding in Jesus and allowing him to abide in you uh, to following his words and his commandments for your life. And if you'll do that, I promise what's going to happen is you will bear fruit because you can't become more and more like Jesus and not affect the world around you. So uh, focus on being more like Jesus and the bearing fruit will take care of itself. All right, let's go on now to page 20, uh, or, uh, day number 24 on page number 109. And this is about taming the tongue. Uh, the tongue is the most destructive member of our bodies. Um, more than our hands, our fists, our feet, uh, the tongue can do so much damage. 
And James 3 is a great uh, chapter about the tongue. And it talks about how our, our tongue is, uh, it kindles a great fire and it's set on fire of hell. And uh, it, it tells us that we can't control our tongue. We don't have the power on our own to control our tongue. And we've got to be careful that we don't use our tongue for cursing and slandering others and uh, just picking other people apart. And, you know, it says in uh, Ephesians 29, what are some things that should come out of our mouth? Well, only the good things, only things that edify. So discuss question number four with your group or with your partner. How can you put Colossians 4, 6 into practice? I want you to read Colossians 4, 6 and then I'll talk about, put maybe come up with some practical ways of how you can put it into practice. And then... Proverbs 12, 19 says something about our mouth. What does it say? It says that the truth, it's going to stand forever, but lies only last for a moment. And so we need to spend our time talking about truth, speaking of truth, speaking truth and the things that are truth. Don't, don't spend time, uh, don't waste time on, loss, uh, on lies and gossip and all the things that will uh, de deter and take away from you speaking the truth. Uh, also, how much power do you think your words have? Well, the scripture says death and life are in the power of the tongue. You can actually give somebody life through your words or you can give somebody death through your words. Uh, it's your choice. Uh, do you want to bring death to your family or do you want to bring life? Do you want to bring death to your friends, death to your uh, co-workers, or do you want to bring life? That's completely up to you. I can guarantee you that people really enjoy being around people who speak life and bring life into the situation. The last one I want you to discuss is number eight. Now, on page number 11, it says, how can you apply the truth of Proverbs 15.1 to your everyday life? So read Proverbs 15.1 and then discuss how can you apply that to your everyday life. I want to pray for you before we uh, close out today. Um, and I want to pray that, first of all, God would help us to be disciples, that we would be disciples, and then also that we would bear much fruit and that we would learn how to tame our tongue through the Holy Ghost. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I thank you for the time that we've had together today, and I thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of your people. And I pray, God, that you would help us to go beyond just being believers and Christians, God, that we would actually be followers of you, that we would be your disciples. And God, that we wouldn't hold anything back but that we would turn over every part of our life to you. And then, God, that we would bear much fruit because we're becoming more like you in every area of our life. And, God, we will allow you to do uh, the great things that you want to do in us and through us and all around us in the people that you have uh, let us have this influence with. And then, God, help us as we become more like you to tame our tongue. Don't let our tongue get the best of us. Don't let it uh, do damage and evil and tear other people down and be negative speaking and gossip and, and, and lying. But God, help us to speak the truth and help us, Lord Jesus, to allow your words uh, and your truth and your life to come from our lips. And God, we will give you the glory and praise as you help us speak life in every situation around us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next week.